Welcome to packemin.com where we pack four cars into this garage and three of them are mine. They're kept out of the weather here, it is a good spot for them, but uh, given that we're in a bit of a lockdown situation for the next couple of days, I thought it was time to address one nagging problem with the Mighty Boy now that I've got it on the road and it's all uh, uh, wheel aligned properly uh, using a special local business that could deal with the skinny nature of the car. You can look at that video up in the corner. But there's one thing that's been bothering me about the Mighty Boy, so I thought I would sort that out. So let's travel down there to the back of the garage where it's even more crowded and check it out. There's the Mighty Boy after a little fluids check the other day. Seems to have a little leak coming from the water bottle for the windscreen. Anyway, further investigation required. It's not a big deal because I don't really use it that much. But let's hop in and see what the problem is with the SS40T as it's known by Suzuki. The problem in here is that radio that uh, you might be able to see in the gloom in here. It doesn't pick up anything. So I'm guessing that the aerial has come out. Unlikely as it is to have come out at the stereo end, although there is a cord hanging down there, so maybe a couple of things have been tossed around in here at various times. So what I'm gonna do is unscrew the housing around that and then have a look at the back of the radio just to ensure the aerial's in. Now look for your enjoyment. I have moved the Nikki out and rolled this forward into a bit more sunlight so um, we can all get a better view of what's going on. So let's undo this housing and see what lies behind. And of course, I brought a sword to a knife fight. So this might do the job better. Always bring two screwdrivers at least, you never know. This is a uh, a fancy MP3 Pioneer unit. I don't think it's got Bluetooth, so it can't be that new. It must be at least uh, a decade or so old. Went back when MP3s were the thing. Of course, I'd prefer to have the original radio in here, even though it only picked up AM probably. And then if I wanted to put something fancy in, put it in the glove box or such. Of course, when I undo all of this, it probably won't move. Because I probably should be undoing those things instead. Before I undo the bottom, I will give that a go and see if I can extricate the stereo. Just using the little release pins on the side. Hold fire, I've got a couple in the Land Rover from when I had a new stereo put in that one. Well, I didn't even need to go as far as the Land Rover because I've just had a new stereo put in the Nikki as well. I need to have my radio when I'm driving and uh, these were with the new unit that went in there. So they should do the trick. Let's see anyway. Uh, they're probably too big. I need special Pioneer ones, I'm guessing. Right, well, before I give up on this, I will go and get the ones from the Land Rover. So, hang in there. Well, you know what? They were too big as well. Must be a brand-specific thing. I had no idea. So, let's continue with Plan A and take out the rest of this. And hopefully, it's all in one heap that'll smoothly slide out of the dashboard and reveal the all-important aerials plug at the back. What could possibly go wrong, as they say? Possibly I go wrong, as they say in The Simpsons. Oop, something went wrong there, but that is all good. Okay, the moment of truth. Here we go. Oh, it moves. It moves indeed. And 
there's no aerial at all. So, that's interesting. I'll have to get a torch and see if I can see an aerial lying around in there. Aha! There it is, right at the back. Must have fallen out through, I don't know, vibration? I don't think I pulled it out just now. It is that far back. Or maybe it's just not that long. And that's the problem. Maybe I did pull it out as I pulled the whole unit out. Let's see what we can do. There's not a lot of room in there at all. And if I take that out, does that give me access around the back? Yes, it does. Right. So. <laughs> oh my God, this is tiny. Why is that so tight? Okay, an update. Um, I had a look at the aerial on the outside to see if that could be disconnected or move somehow to give me some length inside and it's, it appears to be quite tight. Uh, now I have my box of degreaser which will be a place for the radio to rest while I'm fiddling around in the dashboard. Perfecto. Kinda. And I can see that the aerial cord is uh, held on by a, a clasp. So maybe I'll undo that, see if that gives me just even a centimetre more length. And then that'll be enough to pop it back in the radio and then I can secure it again. So, let's see if we can unclasp that clasp. And to use the uh, ability to see in the dash, I've got my special torch and screwdriver combination. Which you'll see says, Girl Power. Now I got that from the local shopping centre they were giving them away for I think Father's Day uh, well at least they were giving away ones that said Happy Father's Day or Best Dad <laughs> and by the time I got down there the only ones they had were girl power ones so anyway I took it it was free anyway it's good good enough for this job now where do I need to go I need to go right up there where I can't reach unless I try and coming around the back which I can and just open that up a little bit. Uh, right. Well, that gives me a fraction more again. I can actually reach that far now, which I'd argue is far enough. Doesn't seem to want to stay in there. That could be half the problem. I think I'm going to admit defeat and take this down to the local stereo people. That's a shame. Anyway, at least they'll give it a nice little check over. Um, so that's it. Thank you for watching. At least we know what the problem is. It's simply that an aerial has fallen out the back of it, but now that aerial is too short and will not connect to the back of it so it probably needs a new um, plug on the end but uh, I'm not well versed enough in that side of things to have a go myself uh, so I will leave it up to the experts right oh well there we go we tried but there have been two positives from today. I've managed to put in a couple of stoppers to keep the seatbelt 
from falling down to the ground. And also, thanks to a seller in India, I've managed to get a new door lock. I did purchase some through China, but they were the wrong size for these little jobbies in the Suzuki. And thankfully, a lot of Suzuki parts are still being made in India um, from Aruti. So uh, that was the solution. And sure enough, fits and works a treat. Thank you.